When I heard about aquariums that use soil instead of a dedicated professional substrate, I thought, cheap, outdated, contrary to everything I knew. It's not worth the effort because it's going to be a failed aquarium anyway. But when serious people from different corners of the world say the opposite, you start to have doubts. That's how I started this aquarium project. In fact, it's an ecosystem. I started with the thought that it wouldn't last more than a few months. I was wrong again, because I've reached day 628 since I started this project. And look how the aquarium looks. It's surprising that it lasted so long, but also that it looks better than my aquariums, where I used everything that can be used in an aquarium with full fertilization and a lot of hardware equipment. But what happens to the fish and shrimp? They are all agitated. I just fed them. Tip. The food I give them is dry, so I mix it with a little water first and give them that resulting paste. But there are also bigger pieces left. And when that happens, everyone wants them. But this ecosystem is constantly changing. That doesn't mean I don't intervene from time to time. I try to intervene as rarely as possible. I don't even know what can create an imbalance in this ecosystem, especially since I don't use a filter. I just add small amounts of water when the water evaporates and trim the plants when they grow. But this time, it was something different. After I started trimming this lawn plant, it started growing faster. So I kept trimming it. And it grew even faster. I was pleasantly surprised to find that it looked incredible. But the good things end there. An algae grew aggressively on this plant. And no matter how hard I tried to clean the plant of this algae, I didn't succeed. The algae keeps reappearing. So I made the decision to remove part of this plant along with the algae. And I decided to give this plant a new chance. Surprisingly, it has been in this aquarium since day one. However, it most likely did not grow due to the lack of fertilizers in this aquarium. The curious thing is that it did not die either. I have replanted several parts of this plant in various places to increase its chances of survival. If I am not mistaken, this plant is Micranthemum Monte Carlo. When I pulled this plant out of the gravel, I probably pulled out something that the shrimp like. What do the shrimp eat in that area? Not far away, other shrimps eat a granule. Since I started diversifying the food I give the shrimps, they have started to breed. I don't give them more food, even though there are more of them, just a more varied food. And they continue to be more and more numerous.
Yesterday, I saw this snail upside down. I was hoping it would turn itself around, but it didn't seem to move. I don't know if it died or just hibernating. Sometimes snails go into a kind of hibernation state. I'm going to turn this snail around. I heard that some snails can't turn themselves around and can die, so I'm going to help it. The other snail of the same species seems fine. I have noticed a lot of snail eggs in the fish tank. How did they manage to stick to this snail, other snails, and everywhere else in the aquarium? Technically speaking, these white bumps are not the actual eggs of the snail, but rather tiny capsules that usually hold between 30 and 100 of the actual eggs. Normally, you would think they are from the nerite snail, but they could also be from this pink snail. There is a possibility that the snail is exhausted after laying so many eggs all over the aquarium and has entered this hibernation-like state, or maybe it even died after laying these eggs. This pink snail is not very popular, although I consider it better than the nearite snail. The fish in this ecosystem are a little harder to keep under observation. Although I haven't seen any dead fish, I haven't seen all 12 in a while. The fish seem fine, but I'm worried that without a filter, I don't know what to expect. And unpleasant surprises can appear any time. A problem that other aquariums don't have is the fact that it's summer now and the water temperature is rising. When the water temperature exceeds 26 degrees, there is a certain danger. I have established this temperature threshold. There is nothing official. But above this temperature threshold, I believe that in the absence of a filter, without suction of the substrate, where a lot of residue is deposited and without water changes, some chemical and biological reactions accelerate so that they can lead to disasters. An easy to understand example. In a warmer environment, there will be an explosion of bacteria and the plants will suddenly accelerate their growth. The same thing happens in nature. In the hot season, lakes, ponds during the summer, due to the increase in water temperature, fish die of suffocation. Fish in lakes can die in the summer due to several factors related to warming water temperatures. As the water warms, it holds less dissolved oxygen, which is crucial for fish survival. This can lead to a condition known as a fish kill, where large numbers of fish die due to low oxygen levels. Additionally, warmer temperatures can exacerbate issues such as algal blooms, which consume oxygen as they decompose, further reducing the oxygen available in the water. High temperatures can also make fish more susceptible to disease and parasite infections. I decided to make a radical change. In this capsule are the eggs of Moina macrocopa. Moina macrocopa is a species of freshwater crustacean, commonly known as a water flea. These tiny crustaceans are known for their ability to survive in waters with low oxygen levels, high salinity, and other impurities. They are particularly useful in aquaculture and aquariums as a food source for fish and fry with small mouths due to their high protein content. I chose to ignore all the seller's instructions regarding the conditions these eggs need to hatch it seems too complicated to me. 
I preferred to simply put the eggs in the water like this. I repeated this in two other different ecosystems, which I will present on this YouTube channel in the future. But if in none of these three ecosystems these eggs hatch, I will try again, but strictly following the seller's rules. After so much time spent with this ecosystem, I have completely changed my perspective on this hobby. Now, it seems normal to me that any aquarium must be an ecosystem. Other aquariums that use a lot of equipment can be likened to a comatose patient on a hospital bed. He is only kept alive by many devices, and when he is disconnected from this equipment, cannot survive on his own. But unfortunately, we are increasingly connected to technology. We are two categories of people. Addicted to technology and addicted without realizing it. If you are interested in other information about this ecosystem, leave me a comment and I will answer you. You can also watch these videos.